Okay, it's my birthday to be on time on camp for day four out of six. Go for our first commitment, we have World Without Milo, written by Scott Peterson. So, time, kind of, time goes around, okay? Basically, it begins basically with Ellie and, you know, the Crossing Guard, and basically, he goes forth mad about all the trouble Milo calling into Milo, we'll be better off without you. And then that day we wake up, it grows without Milo. He was apparently never born, and it gets boring pretty fast for him. <laughs> Yeah, two Elliot goes, and two Elliot songs in a week. Yeah, he gets kind of a song when he more wondering about World of Milo would be like, and it's a really fun song. I think the other song had a little catchier, but at the same time, the song also was more elaborate. We got two Christian Clay and King of Wake from the other one, versus this one, but oh well. A little song. And speaking of song, we haven't technically had any slick at fitting for a this week. Nothing, nothing really I noticed. But this episode that would star guys around the truck and what can they can do? Meat Loaf. That sort of very star of song, you can hear it. And he, well, you can more hear like the Mega Gang like saying it, but he's definitely looking to Meat Loaf. Yeah. Again, that's a smaller reference. That's a song that well, kind of cool about me, but it's not the first song I would put. Like, well, that good that they kind of reach back for that one. Um, so that cool. Um, Go tank, go Vic have to take out the one Kong. Um, that means the power up will have two. Um, yeah, um, go, um, the up is pretty good. It's a worth a life plot, but from back to someone else, and I kind of want to see one of them, and yeah, I kind of think it's been a couple. I, you know, it got to be like more, obviously, with how many stories are, but I want to see like a few where it's a wonderful life story, but from the back to someone else, who's mean, going like we know, you know. Like, you're going to become a kind of that idea. Um, but, they kept going to kind of take a little answer, you know, score them. I will kind of take a little bit to get to the story with scanning it up and the song. But, when you get to there, it's a lot of fun to think about it. The first guy I'm going to get for Baby Lass is like the first thing you see is Scott Hines in school. And it's going to be Casey Week, Casey Week, next week. Casey Week, next week, not go much or something like that. And it's going to bump into it, and then I'll learn Crumble School and get um, Casey the Not. It's funnier in context, sorry. I'm going to get some more sign gag later on, but um. Georgia Hand will be proud. Um, but it's funny in context. I'm not trying to describe it. Bradley also gets more to do. He gets a whole sequence where Elliot dressing up a Milo. Um, so, I think that's funny. Um, as for, um, I think you know, the explanation, basically, very good explanation in Vault Time Travel. There are a few coincidences, like things that happen to fall into play. Basically, basically, uh, Cohen did do some weird thing that prevented Milo from being born. What happened exactly, I don't know, but I guess that's a joke. But, and it become and why can't like, remember the Milo world? Because he had a lead top kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> that. It. But we're getting weird that he, some kind of, he had to stop and then Milo the back, but in the world he only had, you know, Milo. But I guess because it's worth from Milo. Like, I, but he had like top sign, so did they explain that? Like maybe he actually picked one up and didn't get my on it. I don't know. Speaking of Elliot home life, uh but he I guess his mom? Like he he can have that person with the mom. In fact there was a scene we shot the scare of his for her first scene in the week. And I don't know if it's a true general or if he just kinda of beat it up, but apparently he was senior when she was a sophomore go over technically Go that. I don't mean he's not that. I mean he like fresh out like college or something like that maybe. But um, that's like a true thing. That guy is sing more out there. Um. So um, yeah. And then about his mom or whoever they go fat. <laughs> um. But yeah. But um. But both of the couple code did give a lot of like him. Yeah, you know, reacting to the world without Milo, because it's going to be a very boring world without Milo, and it's what you expect, but I found it really kind of interesting how we get more development, you know, with Ellie and Ellie learn that maybe the danger kind of makes things more interesting. I kind of point to every Ellie episode this week, and I like that one, and I'm still, I definitely want to have to watch it again to know if the ending affects it, or if it's not a big a deal, because it's 
definitely, definitely give a mechanic input to flashback to an extent, but and I don't have to watch it again until I have to watch the whole thing again for a thing. Um, but, um, and that for a joke, not as many people, but like a plot kind of one. But that's a good joke. Like a talking squirrel with Bradley doing the Milo thing. Go, and the guy skips mine. Go, and the other gang, right? Go, yeah, like a fun little go out. Like a kind of peek into a role about Milo and the game, and give a few like a more lore. And it, and it comes in for Tim Winkin can kind of follow the plank, but for what part we all fit the plot. You know, I can, okay, we have a legend on top of that vehicle, how would it affect him, and yada yada. Again, for a cartoon, go, I kind of like on the Clyde, go, yeah, Wolf of Milo, pretty good episode. I'm looking forward to it, like, yeah, I bet, I mean, I'm, we'll go, I'm looking forward to drink, go, I think it may just be a dream, but then we're, hey, wait, we're going to turn our time trial on it, go, yeah, go. Um, our thing to point out, we don't, we focus all on Elliot, but we don't see what Melissa and Gak are really like without Milo, like, are like any better or worse or anything like that. We don't know, we don't get any focus on them, like, at all. But because of a quick time travel way thing, I did not, but, I don't know, I can't fucking time Elliot, you know. Uh, I think I'm going to like a 22 minute episode because it's more than a lot of different things. I got to the one down guy that could have a time and a half, I call it for Elliot guy, but the poor guy guy really well, so I can kind of forgive that. So I get my enjoyment of like slightly more with each other quality, but their quality is very solid. I've been able to talk too long about one call, I'll give you a bit for me that type of code. That way. Okay, now it's time for The Rake, written by Danny Vetri. I still don't pronounce that. How long did that game have coming by her? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, go in the couple code. We got, we got to go. For a combo rate, go we had a Milo trying to run the you know, big rank thing that every year he entered, but never get, never get back to the finish line. He didn't care if he win, but he need to get back to the finish line because Murphy's Law. Go away, try to help him with that. And meanwhile, basically, coming off the ending of her tramp to keep walk, um, the cool cabinets have been basically demoted in, from the National Protector to cleaning out housing in the Renaissance. While the cabinets, did the cabinets, did I just make a ship name? Um, well, Brick and Cavana have, um, been, I can't, I don't know what game, probably demoted from every kitchen to the National Protector. And then the cool cabinets have to make sure that they fail so the don't take over the world. Um, and, but in the mission to do this, by acting that they ended up in 1875, like you do, and have to get out. Very Bad Future Part 3 in that way. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, um, God, we're going definitely fun. Um, again, it's very much like the Chantry Block, where it called the rank, but really most of the folk can get gone to go in Cavendish, but I think both of them get an equal focus, I think. The Varig part is still pretty catfying. It's got a lot of fun gags with them trying to help Milo get back on Rock School, and there's a catfying getting to it. You know, and by being simple or probably Prince can walk, it's better written and just feel more complete than that episode, which is still like, but I just feel like it's about. But I kind of just do get a lot of good jokes here. They bump into um, Sheriff Murphy, the great grandfather of Marine Law, and they don't make any reference to your West episode. But uh, and the go kind of Jane up here, for example, um, which might happen at some point, but not now. Um, but he went by the king guy with that dad, Jesus Spader, so that cool. Um, but um, the hockey for example, not off lot can the both park on equal level, pretty fun. Um, you know, but they definitely have some. Yeah, fun stuff in the with them. Um, I did not much to good thing joke well. But a funny moment battle but work for good thing. I like how I like how it turned out that the place where they travel to a big keep of being trying to go for time travel could go a lot of times duck here. Um, because of being gone. I won't tell their story, but but you know, back some good stuff. Uh but I'm calling this one uh, so, okay. Go ahead and break that trend. <laughs> no. 
Um, but I'm actually probably going to try and do that channel with one in spite of having kind of a couple of plots in this game. We really have to go. Like, I could kind of eat one of in a way to type of code. I thought I really kind of got to find a book plot. You know, got to find a new, got to find a little ending. And it's kind of abrupt, but it will eat the plot. Both plots are wrapped up in a decent way. Um, yeah, I like how they, unlike, Trench Block did it fine. But the like how both plots are kind of written better and are kind of tied together better. And, I do wonder if what's going on in the episode becomes bad back or leading war. Yo, you know, you know, I'm wondering what can happen after we end up chance to walk and already we have a, and of course, what, what happens next, so. Fun stuff just all around, both of them, very fun, guys like, so, yeah, the uh, game is definitely pretty good. Yeah, no, but the game, I feel like, way to handle the robot and this thing, and, I do be quite a lot of dope, but at this point I get much. And it's a funny moment, but I'm not looking to remember to come. I can't call it that funny if you ever want, but it's still fun. Go, there you go. World without, my, world without Milo in the rain. World without Milo, I like to find a little more because I just got caught off and I got a plot and I found funnier, but this one probably won't even. I'm probably already able to even up good for the group cook in general. Um, the yeah, other one I like more. Talk about Final Alpha, I'm not really evil one. Um, go, yeah, pretty, no, pretty comparing, I think. Go, tomorrow, which will be penultimate day, uh, we have Love Toboggan slash the World of Island of Las Dakotas. Okay. Both of them come pretty interesting. One, scare a go. Cool. Um, go. There you go, um, we shall have some fun there, and, um, go, yeah, uh, not an awful lot to get, go, goodbye.